Good morning, everybody. Hope you're all healthy and safe. Uh, we are going to continue with our section 4.3 of the third module based on translation theorems. So, in the previous lecture, we had uh, introduced or we had uh, studied the first translation theorem and we had also done various problems related to that. Now, in this uh, lecture, we shall be discussing about the second translation theorem. Now, before moving on to second translation theorem, it will be very useful for us if we learn what is meant by a unit step function. Okay. So, in most of the uh, practical problems that we will be facing, uh, there will be like an option like on and off. Okay, like uh, a current is passed to the circuit uh, at a particular time, up to a particular time and then it is not passed or uh, some uh, you can even consider the passage of water through a pipe at a particular time or uh, up to certain time water is passed through the pipe and later on it is not. So uh, we can always um, translate such problems into on off problems like when the water is passing uh, you can consider it is to be on and when it is not it is off. So similarly it will be very comfortable for us if we, uh, we if we have to find something uh, related to that uh, the flow of water or the flow of electricity it will be very comfortable for us if we convert it into mathematical problem and for that uh, what we do is we consider the off condition to be uh, to be denoted by the number 0 and the on condition to be denoted by number 1. So that is how this unit step function came into existence uh, because of the practicality uh, or uh, before because of things surrounding, surrounding us and how we can uh, convert them into mathematical problems to solve. And uh, this is also known as heaviside function because it was found by a mathematician and even an um, he was also an um, English electrical engineer his name was Ol uh, heaviside, Oliver Heaviside. So, uh, this unit step function it is simple, it is uh, u of script u of t minus a equal to 0 in the time interval 0 to a, okay, where a is greater than 0 and it is equal to 1 when t is greater than or equal to a. Okay. Now, another portion that is from the interval 0 to a, the unit step function is 0 and uh, above a, whatever value above a, the unit step function is one. So this is called as a unit step function. So uh, with the help of unit step function, like we can, uh, if we graph the unit step function, you know how it will be. Uh, it will be like if you consider this graph. If this is a, uh, then from zero to a, the function value is zero here itself, and above a, the value becomes one. So above a the value is constant and it is 1 okay this will be the graph of the unit step function so with the help of unit step function we can just uh, like uh, uh, we can make uh, any given function to disappear at a particular time interval or a particular interval right because if we multiply say f of t is a function which is given to us with the unit step function okay what will happen in the interval 0 to a this function will vanish right but and from a onwards the function will be seen that is you are actually shifting the function to the position a the same function which was there from um, 0 or it was graphed from 0 will be shifted to the position a when we multiply it by the unit step function okay now uh, there is a uh, one more uh, or uh, usual uh, formula that we can uh, use uh, with the help of step function we will be able to uh, form the corresponding piecewise functions which are given to us uh, now uh, like uh, we have mentioned earlier the piecewise functions most of the uh, functions that we 
have to face i have to overcome this based on the piecewise functions uh, so they won't be like a, a normal functions in practical level so we can use this unit step function to transform a piecewise function which is given to us so we will just i will show how it is done uh, given f of t just keep in mind these formulas given f of t is a piecewise function which is given by g of t in the interval 0 less than equal to t less than a and it is h of t when t is greater than equal to a now how can i write this f of t in terms of the unit step function f of t will be equal to g of t minus g of t into u script u, u of t minus a plus h of t into u of t minus a so keep this in mind okay f of t is equal to g of t minus g of t into script u uh, of t minus a that is unit step function plus h of t into script u of t minus a okay and now uh, similarly uh, we can have now uh, suppose we are given shall just see how this can be done suppose uh, f of t is say like um, 20t when 0 less than equal to t less than 5 and 0 when t is greater than equal to 5 how can i write this f of t in terms of the step function f of t will be here g of t is 20t h of t is 0 so it will be 20t minus 20t into u of t minus a is 5 here plus uh, 0 into so you don't need to write that so this is how uh, if we are asked to write a given piecewise function uh, in terms of unit function you can do this if the function is of this particular form now uh, we have just one more uh, formula that is if uh, the function is f of t is given by 0 when 0 less than equal to t less than a it is g of t when a less than equal to t less than b that is we are having uh, one more extra uh, point and it is again 0 when t greater than equal to b hmm? then we can write f of t in terms of the unit function as follows f of t is equal to g of t into unit step function u of t minus a minus u of t minus b okay so this is another formula that you can i mean keep in your mind so that we can now uh, do the problems when they are asked so this is something about the unit uh, step function that we shall be using for uh, discussing about the corresponding second translation theorem uh, so as I've uh, mentioned uh, this unit step function is also what does it do it does the property it does the uh, property of or it does shift the particular graph so similarly with the help of the unit uh, step function we shall determine or we shall form the second translation theorem that is uh, if uh, f of s is equal to script l of f of t that is it's given a function f and uh, capital f is the laplace transform of that function then uh, the laplace transform of f of t minus a into unit step function of t minus a is equal to e raised to minus a s into f of s okay so uh, in the first translation theorem we were uh, discussing about the exponential multiple of a given function okay that is uh, what will happen if you are given a function what will be the laplace transform of the exponential multiple so here um, we are actually shifting the function to a particular point and then multiplying it with the unit step function and seeing what is the laplace transform so uh, that is the second translation theorem 
so uh, the proof is pretty much simple we'll just look into it uh, have a quick look at the proof of this uh, theorem that is first of all what do we have is uh, we have to find the Laplace transform of f of t minus a into the step function right so by the formula it is nothing but 0 to infinity e raised to minus st into f of t into script u t minus a into dt right now I'm going to split this into two. We know that a unit step function it acts from 0 to a and then greater than a. So it is 0 to a e raised to minus st into f of t into script u t minus a plus a to infinity e raised to minus st f of t into the unit step function okay so what will this value be this integral will be 0 why because in between 0 and a the unit step function takes the value 0 so this is equal to 0 so the Laplace transform which is actually just remains to be from a to infinity e raised to minus st f of t into script u of t minus a dt okay and this also will be equal to 1 in a to infinity so this is nothing but integral a to infinity e raised to minus st into f of t dt f of t minus a sorry it is t minus a so because that was a given function t minus a f of t minus a into dt okay so let us see how we can uh, prove this to be the Laplace transform so if uh, if suppose v is equal to t minus a okay v is t minus a this implies uh, what will be our dv dv will be dt because a is a constant hmm? so we get script l of f of t minus a into u of t minus a will be equal to 0 to infinity e raised to minus instead of t we have instead of t we have v plus a v plus a f of t minus a is v and dv and dt both are same so this is nothing but e raised to minus a s will be a constant meaning from 0 to infinity and e raised to minus s v f of v dv so this is nothing but the Laplace transform of f of t right so this is equal to e raised to minus a s into capital f of s this was what we wanted okay now in the previous case we had uh, the limit was a to infinity but when we apply this transformation the limit also changes okay when t is equal to a v will become zero and when t is equal to infinity v will become this. so that is how the limit has also changed and we have form, got the required form of Laplace transform of the function f of t so uh, this is the second translation theorem that is Laplace transform of f of t minus a into uh, unit function unit step function is equal to e raised to minus a s into f of s okay so this was the proof of the second translation here 
Now, as we had uh, mentioned in the first translation theorem itself, the inverse form is very useful while you while solving many initial value problems and all or any differential equation can be solved with the help of Laplace transform and its corresponding inverse. So here also we'll see the inverse form. Uh, so what is the inverse? That is L uh, script L inverse of e raised to minus a s into f of s is nothing but f of t minus a into u of t minus a. Okay, so this is the uh, corresponding inverse form. Now uh, we shall be using uh, this Laplace transform as well as uh, the corresponding inverse form to do various problems uh, to solve the initial value problem and also first let us just uh, see what is uh, the or how we can solve simple uh, direct problems then we'll move on to the uh, solution of the differential equation so first of all let's uh, do a simple problem that is given f of t is equal to it is given 2 minus 3 into unit function of unit step function u of t minus 2 plus u of t minus 3 then if function is given in such a manner what will be the Laplace transform of f of t this is the problem okay so how can we determine the Laplace transform now before moving on to the solution of this problem uh, we have just now seen that the Laplace transform of f of t minus a into unit function u of t minus a is nothing but a raised to minus a s into f of s where f of s is the laplace transform of f of t right so what will happen if f of t is equal to 1 okay what does f of t is equal to 1 means this is the laplace transform of the unit step function u t minus a you will get the corresponding laplace transform of the unit step function so what will this be this will be equal to e raised to minus a s what will be f of s f of s is a laplace transform of f of t what is the laplace transform of 1 it is nothing but 1 by s okay. so this is e raised to minus a s by s so this is a important result which we can use that is the Laplace transform of the unit step function u of t minus a is nothing but e raised to minus a s by s okay so now we can find what is the Laplace transform of this particular function this will be easy hmm. so what will be the Laplace transform uh, let me just write it out L of f of t will be equal to uh, the Laplace transform of 2 minus 3 into Laplace transform of the unit step function u of t minus 2 plus Laplace transform of the unit step function t u of t minus 3. So Laplace transform of 2 is nothing but 2 by s and this is 3 into e raised to minus 2s by s plus e raised to minus 3s by s right this will be the corresponding Laplace transform so with the help of the second translation theorem considering the function to be 1 we can easily determine the Laplace transform of the unit step function which will be useful for uh, solving the uh, many problems related to the differential equation okay now let's just do two more problems next one is to find the inverse okay here we are going to find the inverse uh, the inverse of 1 by s minus 4 into e raised to minus 2 s okay so this is nothing but in the form l inverse of e raised to minus a s into f of s and we know that is equal to f of t minus a into u of t minus a so first we have to determine what is a so here 
a is 2 hmm? and our f of s is nothing but 1 by s minus 4 hmm? so if f of s is 1 by s minus 4 what does f of t f of t will be equal to um, inverse of f of s that is nothing but l inverse of 1 by s minus 4 and what is that value e raised to minus 4 t right uh, not minus e raised to 4 t ok so uh, our l inverse will be equal to nothing but therefore the script l inverse of e raised to minus 2 s by s minus 4 is equal to f of t is e raised to 4 t so what is f of t minus a e raised to 4 into t minus 2 into u of t minus 2 so this is the required solution okay so to find uh, the Laplace inverse of uh, the function which is of the form e raised to minus a s into f of s we just have to determine what is uh, our a and then find what is l inverse of f of s so we shall do just one more problem the next one is to find the Laplace inverse of s by s square plus 9 into a is to minus pi s by 2 ok so how can we do this mm, here uh, our a what is a a is mine a is corresponding it is pi by 2 right and uh, f of s is coming out to be s by s square plus 9 right so what will be l inverse of f of s this is the formula of cos right so this is cos 3t so this is our f of t so what will be this value this will be nothing but f of t minus a that is cos 3 into t minus pi by 2 into unit step function t minus pi by 2 okay. this will be the corresponding inverse Laplace transform so in this lecture we had discussed about the second translation theorem and uh, some uh, fun uh, a function called as unit step function which was a part of the second translation theorem and we did few examples we shall be doing more examples as uh, assignments and um, the problem of solving the differential equation uh, we shall be discussing uh, in the next lecture how to solve the differential equation or the initial value problem with the help of the second translation theorem. So just go through uh, the uh, things that we have learned so far and just to work out the problems. So that's it. Thank you. Stay safe and stay healthy.